and thank you very much for staying with us. This is News Center and we continue with our coverage. We have quite a number of uh, issues to discuss here on the show. Let me start by introducing my guests this morning. And I'll start from my extreme right, Charles Kipkele. Thank you very much for your time. Yeah, we also you. have Franklin Mukwanja. Both of them are political analysts, Kenyans and voters. Yes. Yeah, sure, sure. Uh, so let's start from the debate. It's supposed to be happening later on this evening. At least we have two candidates who've confirmed. So that means at 5.30 at least we'll have something. But what would be the impact um, you know, if Raila Odinga and Uhuru Kenyatta also miss this one? I'll start with you, Franklin. Uh, I think the two gentlemen, mm -hmm. Honorable Raila Odinga and the incumbent president, mm -hmm. uh, Uhuru Kenyatta, are working from the understanding mm -hmm that in our kind of democracy where mobilization is along ethnic uh, groupings, mm -hmm. the debate may not at all change or shift the mindset of the voter. Mm -hmm. And therefore, the ethnicization of our politics has made it difficult to make sure that Kenyans are making, a Kenyan voter is making a decision mm -hmm. uh, based on issues. And because the debate is going to focus on the issues, mm -hmm. then they do better be out there whipping up the ethnic motions, uh, you know, emotions, other than uh, speaking to Kenyans candidly about the issues. Mm -hmm. um, but you'll keenly observe that uh, the Kenyatta administration has had a lot of challenges. And uh, he, as much as he had personal issues in 2013, mm. um, neither was directly, quote, and quote, an incumbent as such, because uh, President Mwaiki was still in office. And, and, and that time, perhaps, it was a little bit easier for mm. them to demonstrate their commitment and willingness mm -hmm. and open-mindedness mm -hmm. to discuss their issues. Right. But with the incumbents also playing on Uhuru Kenyatta's mind, and the challenges that his government has faced, mm -hmm. all the way from, you know, corruption, uh, to the outright issues of what can I do uh, when every Kenyan, including a two-year-old, knows very well that the uh, president is a very powerful you know, being. Right. And, and I think the, the inability of Uhuru Kenyatta to mm. come and confront not just Kenyans, mm -hmm. uh, but also his opponents mm. on uh, why he feels inadequate in addressing um, you know, a number of issues, including the issue of food security, mm. uh, the reason the Unga price is going up. And when you look at the whole uh, issue the way it developed, it is the, it, the inability of the government to plan and, and have foresight and be able to uh, tackle the issues. Right. If you look at the issue of food security again, the issues of uh, mm. Galana Kulalu, you will, you will hear uh, that uh, we didn't get the right fertilizer in the mm. right season. Mm. I think these are the critical questions Kenyans want to put across. And then the obvious question for the opposition is, uh, do you have uh, real ideas to be sound better, mm -hmm. uh, you know, take on the challenges in a much better way, in a much uh, better strategy? And, and I think that question, again, has been very wanting on the side of NASA and right. the, the, the capacity of Raila Odinga himself to articulate All right. uh, these issues and come out as a much better option. All right. Interesting view there you have, Franklin. But I'd like to hear it from you, Charles. I mean, yeah. you have about 6%, um, I mean, it's a considerable amount of undecided voters. Yeah. Um, Franklin is saying that, you know, this too maybe feel it, it, it's better if they're out there campaigning and talking directly to the people. But, you know, you have this 6% of undecided voters. Don't you think maybe through this debate, it's one way of convincing this undecided, undecided voters on who really to put out there as the president. Thank you, Betty. I think I agree to an extent with uh, what Franklin is, is trying to argue that uh, the campaigns are largely characterized by ethnic mobilization and therefore you need to go out where the votes are, go to your strongholds. Mm. But again, we need to look at the changing dynamics of our politics. We have an increasing growing number of uh, voters who, want, who, who desire an issue-based uh, campaign and are therefore uh, in, my, in my thinking, they constitute the largest uh, majority of these uh, undecided voters mm -hmm. because they are yet to see strong issues that are coming up. And therefore, this, uh, campaign, the, the debates uh, ideally will present these uh, platforms of objectivity from which they'll make their decisions. Apart also from the undecided voters, we have the diaspora voters mm -hmm. who have no other platform of engagement with the candidates apart from such uh, mm -hmm. debates. Right. And therefore, if these candidates are serious about going after every vote, and actually engaging Kenyans on the real issues that affect them, it is important that they show up. But uh, as we see it, I think for them, the, they are taking the realist, the realist uh, approach to these campaigns. Mm -hmm. They are looking at the numbers. 
And the overriding principle is the identity politics, where you're looking at yourself and saying, where are my ethnic numbers? Mm -hmm. Where do I need to show them up? And uh, that's what they're doing right oh, now. All right. Yeah. Um, there's a section of leaders from NASA who've said that um, the NASA flag bearer might be attending this uh, debate. If he's the only person, what is it that uh, he should be telling Kenyans with that, you know, the, the viewership that he's going to be having? I think it would be a great opportunity for Honorable Raila Odinga to turn up mm -hmm. and engage Kenyans in a forum where finally we will be able to, you know, engage in reasoned arguments mm -hmm. with the presidential candidate. Uh, because the format in political rallies is one-way communication. And it's not possible to put to test, for mm -hmm. instance, uh, the promise that is uh, given of uh, free secondary education mm -hmm. uh, starting for September 1st. Yes. And therefore it would be more interesting to have him then tell us what is what are the nitty gritties mm. and what is estimated in his own mind to be the cost of affording a free secondary education. Mm -hmm. So we can be he, he may have an opportunity to put to test his ideas. And and I think the essence of a debate is not uh, being eloquent in terms of uh, having the right vocabulary and and the necessary uh, you know mastery of language, right. and being articulate, uh, you know having the debating skills. Mm. But it's about the facts. It's about the figures, the data that you're going to rely on to make your arguments mm -hmm. uh, to sound sensible to Kenyans. So if Uhuru Kenyatta does not turn up, I, I beg you know Raila Odinga, let him turn this into a town hall where there will be an opportunity for him to one-on-one -on -one mm. be able to engage issue by issue. Yes, uh, yes. The issue of governance has uh, bedeviled Uhuru Kenyatta as a demonstration. And Raila Odinga has had a stab at uh, the pinnacle of power in this country, mm. not the presidency, but being perhaps second uh, most uh, you know, in command for a period of five years. Yeah. He would also then tell us, uh, being a prime minister, what was challenging and what will be different, uh, him being the commander in chief of the president, okay. what will he do differently, especially in terms of uh, curbing corruption and uh, making sure that uh, the devolved functions, are actually the, the resources are following uh, the functions. The issue of the health sector, for All instance, right. requires now ideas on how to tackle it. It's not just enough to tell us I'm going to send 45% of uh, revenue mm. uh, collected. Based on what? And, and, and you know, we need to see again how have these resources been utilized, mm. for instance, in ODM counties. How does he expect mm -hmm. to hold to mm -hmm. account uh, the leaders that have misused this resource? So right. uh, it's an opportunity for, uh, for any candidate yes, to take yes. it seriously. Mm. Uh, for me, I think the issues of the debate, have uh, the format have been neither here nor there. Because if you look at the likes of uh, Kuru Aukot, the likes of uh, Wainaina, mm. Professor Wainaina, they have, I think, uh, been very hypocritical in the approach. Initially, it was we won't, you know, attend. Yes. It's discriminatory. Mm. Um, they misadvised their own running mates not to attend. Mm. And uh, along the way now, you're seeing them mellow and realizing that it's actually an opportunity, an opportunity. to be understood. And, right. and I agree that some of them are not even known to us. Uh, by their looks and their name cannot be recalled. Mm, so it's so an opportunity good. for them to come out mm. and, showcase and showcase what they have. All right, I want us to finish on this, but Charles, yesterday the president had a Facebook chat and you know he was answering uh, questions from uh, Kenyans. Um, let's talk about the impact of that vis-a-vis -vis coming for this debate. Um, is it that you know he does not want to play ball to what the media you know, you know, is planning? What was the essence of that, really? I think uh, the strategy by the president betrays the, uh, their thinking of mm -hmm. the team, especially as managing the presidential campaign, mm -hmm. that whereas I don't think President Uru does not want to come to this campaign, mm -hmm. uh, this, uh, this debate, debate. Mm -hmm. he wants to come, but on his own terms. Which is why yesterday when he was launching, uh, when he was doing the the chat, the online, the live chat and everybody, it yes. was just, even the questions that were going to the president, of course they were being filtered, and then the president answers that which is mm. more comfortable to answer. Mm. So you can see there is a level of discomfort around the format and even the questions, because uh, being an incumbent, there is a very high risk. The, the, the biggest risk is on the incumbent, because now you not only come with the advantage of just giving a promise, but you also have to explain Mm -hmm. the last four years. Mm. So with that uh, burden of explaining the track record, then you realize that the president may be a bit jittery in coming. Mm. You even recollect that in uh, 2012, uh, 2007, yes. there was, uh, the, the idea of a debate was mooted, but uh, the then president, Mike Baki, said it is going to, to embarrass the president, so we are not showing up. 
So there is a level of discomfort around having the president, mm. the sitting head of state, in a, in a live uh, debate, mm -hmm. because then things may get out of hand, he may be asked questions, he may not be able to answer. Mm. So I think that is some discomfort on the part of the handlers of the president. All right. But I think, uh, looking at it, the debate at the moment, mm -hmm. um, President Kenyatta is going to, is going to face off uh, with Raila Odinga. And in terms of even being articulated, I've never seen President Uru Kenyatta struggling to articulate himself. Mm -hmm. He's been even on national platforms internationally, and he's been able to speak fairly well. So I think uh, what they need to do is he should come prepared, and if he does not come and Raila Odinga comes alone, it's going to be a lost opportunity because Raila Odinga shall go for the jugular. Mm. It will hit him where it hurts the most, and he'll have no time to recover. True. And especially now that we are looking at people who have around a contest that is almost at a statistical tie in mm. terms of the polls, mm. then it is prudent that he shows up because otherwise it will be a lost opportunity. 8 p.m. is prime time. We have a captive audience of Kenyans watching, and everyone shall be watching. So if he doesn't come, then he may be dealt a blow that he may not even recover. <laughs> wow, yeah. interesting. All right, you mentioned something very um, uh, interesting to our conversation, and that is to do with the polls. Yeah. And I've seen another conversation, you know, developing online, and, you know, a, a number of Kenyans are saying, last time, five years ago, 2013, a time like this, you know, there were all these um, opinion polls about, you know, who's ahead. Mm -hmm. But after the elections, things changed, really, whatever they were saying, because they were putting Raila Odinga uh, ahead. But then Uhuru Kenyatta was the one who won the election. So should we really pay too much attention to these opinion polls? I think opinion polls is, is opinion polling is a science. Mm. And I think we should not lay a lot of emphasis on the poll, but on the opinion. Mm -hmm. And opinions tend to change. And you cannot tie to me, mm. you know, tie down my opinion now that I'll vote for candidate A. Mm. And then two, three days down the line, I get and determine that candidate B is more suitable. Yes. Um, and, and therefore, I, I vote as I want. And, and it is quite a challenging science to be able because it, is, it, is, it has to function within an environment where opinions are too strong. Mm. And when you are handling politicians, once it is favorable to them, then it sounds good. When it's not favorable to them, mm -hmm. it doesn't sound good. But at the end of the day, Kenyans are going to go to the ballot at, uh, on, on 8th uh, of August mm -hmm. in a few days, and we'll be able to see perhaps the most accurate, which has not been able to function in this country, mm -hmm. is the exit poll, because then you are able to sample uh, from the very, you know, a, a number of voters that are actually mm, exiting mm. Uh, the polling stations. And at that time, they can freely and more accurately be able to tell you how they have actually voted. Mm. And, and therefore, that is a more accurate way of gauging the outcome uh, than the opinion of whom will you vote. There are so many issues that uh, inform um, the voting patterns between, are going to inform voting patterns in between now and the ballot. Uh, day. So we must not just be dismissive, but appreciate that the opinion in the polling is stronger than the poll outcome itself. All right. Because the opinions are bound to change, whether right. you like it or not. Okay, Charles. Yeah, I think uh, when you look at the, you asked the question about 2013 and how mm. the, there was a slight, a significant, not a slight, but a significant change yes. in the polling numbers and actually the final outcome. Mm. Uh, when these polls were released, there was a, a result that was never given so much prominence. They said if, uh, apart mm. from the ones that is out there, if uh, it's only Raila Odinga and Uru Kenyatta who are running for the presidency, then a different set of results were coming. And this is actually the thing we need to capture because uh, these other fringe candidates are not really in the minds of Kenyans. Mm. So when you go to the minds of Kenyans with a question and you are giving them a range of choices, so many of them, you end up confusing them to the extent that you do not get a proper result. But the, uh, the majority of Kenyan voters are going to this election with the thinking that we only have two presidential yes, candidates, yes. and that is how they are going to, to make their choices. And then secondly, on the issue of the undecided voters, my thinking is that these undecided voters are probably the voters who may not show, uh, it, it's uh, the ones who may not show up to vote, probably if it goes up to the last, uh, mm -hmm. to the elections. And therefore, in looking at these polls, they, the, the pollsters should go further and say, in the event that these undecided voters do not, uh, do not cast their Come votes, to vote. then, out of the results that you have gotten, then we, we, we now recalculate, we reconfigure these results so that we get a final figure that reflects exactly what's going to happen. All right. Because I think uh, the flaws that comes that is happening in this poll is that most of the time we focus, uh, they, they are giving prominence to all the aspirants, the eight of them, all right. until, uh, of course, almost all, every Kenyan knows that there is not going to be a real. I do not see the possibility right. of a real. We'll be but right now, 
none of them has crossed the 50% plus one. All right, we'll be having that rerun con conversation in a few minutes, but we want to take a break. When we come back, we'll be crossing over to our second hour of uh, News Center. So don't go away, I'll continue. Our conversation continues shortly. <laughs>